Starting in 1989 and rolling all the way to 1998, the Sega's in a... The, the th Starting in 1989 and rolling all the way to 1998, the Sega Genesis had over 800 games released on its library. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jay. Welcome to Square Pegs. And today, we are talking about the best of the best released each year for the Sega Genesis lifespan. That's right, we're starting in 89, we're going all the way to 98. I'm going to pick two games each year, except for 98, when only one game released. And we're going to kick things off right now with one of the greatest arcade ports ever released for a home console. When I stop and think about the Sega Genesis in 1989, the thing that really springs to mind for me are excellent arcade ports. And number one with a bullet for me is Ghouls and Ghosts. Now, I am someone who unapologetically despises Ghosts and Goblins on the NES. I thought it was terrible. Didn't enjoy it. Never enjoyed it, never will enjoy it, I find it way too hard to be fun. But it's amazing what happens when you put a fresh coat of paint on it, and you make it look the way it does in the arcade, and you make the gameplay a million times better, and you get Ghouls and Ghosts. This is one of my favorite games on the Genesis, and it released year one. This was something that just came out of the blue and was perfect. It's such an excellent arcade port, it's just, it's brilliant, it's one of my favorites. But there's another one that released that year as well that was also an arcade port, and that is Golden Axe. Now, Golden Axe is a fantastic beat-em-up where you are in a medieval fantasy setting, and is there really anything better than kicking the little gopher guys? I don't know exactly what the guys are that give you the magic bottles, but they always look like little gophers or woodchucks to me, so I, I guess I enjoyed kicking them because that's what they looked like. I don't know. But I thought it was a fantastic game, and it was something that you could play multiplayer, and it was wonderful. It was such a great experience to be able to play these fantastic arcade ports at home on your TV. Now, I came to the Genesis late. I didn't get the Genesis until 92. But this was something that when I got it, I was sure to go back to and play. <laughs> 1990 was a really interesting year because there were just some off-the-wall games released on the Genesis, but my two favorite I don't think could be any more diametrically opposed. Number one for me was John Madden Football. This was a game that I think I said earlier that I started in 1992 on the Genesis. I actually started in 1991. I was wrong on that. But when I got my Genesis, I got John Madden Football with it, and it was something where, while I wasn't a huge football fan, I loved the video game version of it. I thought it was fantastic. It was a ton of fun to play. It was a deep game with great gameplay. I loved that you were able to like go in really as any team, which I also love Joe Montana football, but it didn't have the entire NFL roster on it. So John Madden football at least gave me every team I was able to play as I could play as my terrible New England Patriots. The other game from 1990 that I loved that I ended up getting when I got my Genesis was Fantasy Star 2. And the Fantasy Star games are really deep RPGs. These are heavy JRPGs. They're very anime inspired very sci-fi fantasy and there are things where when i look at them today i do think they're a little bit clunky and they are kind of victims of their time of their design age but they're still fantastic games with incredible storylines that i can go back to and still enjoy now there's definitely other games that released in 1990 that you could probably say are better than these two but for me these were the two that i thought were the best released in 1990 and the ones that i probably put the most gameplay into Nineteen ninety one for me was a fantastic year for video games because this is when I got my Genesis. I was at a fever pitch for this console. I wanted nothing more than to go fast. I wanted to play Sonic the Hedgehog. So you will notice conspicuous by his absence on these next two games is Sonic. Don't worry, he shows up later. First up for me in 1991 is a game that has really kind of set itself as one of my favorites from the Genesis, and that is Gain Ground. Now, I didn't know this was an arcade experience. I had no idea about it. It was something I didn't really play until probably about 10 years ago. And it was one that I just loved. I really appreciated the idea of finding these different characters, these different classes. I don't really know how to categorize this because it's such an interesting concept. But as you go through, you're just kind of trying to move your way through a level to get to the finish line. And if your character dies, you're able to use one of the other characters you've unlocked. Each character plays a little bit differently. Each character has different abilities. It's pure arcade fun, and it's absolutely brilliant. But for me, number one in 1991 was Toe Jam & Earl. Now, Toe Jam & Earl, to this day, is one of my favorite games. 
it might be top five for me on the Genesis. Actually, I think it is top five for me on the Genesis. This was my first exposure to a roguelike game. This is my first exposure to a game where the levels constantly changed. Like I just said, a roguelike game. And I loved the music. I loved the character designs. I loved the idea of having to go through all these levels and find the pieces of your ship set to this incredible soundtrack with these bizarre, crazy enemies that you had to get away from or destroy. I just adored it. Toe Jam & Earl to this day is one of my favorite franchises, and it all started here in 1991. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog is not on this list, but you'll see coming up in 1992, he's here. Of course, Sonic is here in 1992, because in 1992 we got Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is arguably the best entry in the Genesis pantheon of Sonic games. Like, what do you, I mean, what do you have? You have Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic & Knuckles. All of them are great. Sonic 2 is the best. I think it is the most balanced, the most well-designed, the best level selection, amazing music, great characters. I loved that you could add Knuckles the Echidna in later on via Sonic & Knuckles. It's just... Man, Sonic 2 is perfect. It really is. It's just a perfect experience. Now, I know a lot of people don't like it, and a lot of people, you're wrong. It's fantastic. I don't care what you say. And yes, this is an opinion piece, but my opinion's right in this case. The other game from 1992 for me that was a big, big, big deal, and I think it's something that a lot of people will actually agree on, is Streets of Rage 2. I think Streets of Rage 2 is probably the banner carrier for what is the best beat-em-up. You can have your final fights, you can have your Captain Commandos, you can have any number of great beat-em-ups, but for me, Streets of Rage 2 is number one. It is a phenomenal game with an amazing soundtrack, great memorable characters, wonderful controls, just everything works for this game. There's nothing in Streets of Rage 2 that misses. I play it to this day and I think it's fantastic. And while yes, newer beat-em-ups have eclipsed it in terms of technology and gameplay. For the 16-bit generation, Streets of Rage 2 is number one. Nineteen ninety-three might be the strongest year for game releases on the Sega Genesis, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I could put NHL 94 on here and I'd be perfectly contented to do so because it is one of my favorite games of all time, but I am going to refrain from including an NHL game on this list just because there are more important and, frankly, better games released every year. And number one this year is Shining Force. Now, I love tactical strategy RPGs, and Shining Force is a game that just... When I finally discovered it, and I didn't discover it until probably 2010 or 2011, it blew my mind how incredible this game was. And it made me realize exactly how much of the foundation of a game like Golden Sun was laid in the Shining Force series, because if you play Golden Sun, you see design elements that were introduced in Shining Force all throughout that series. It is something where you can see the traditions that Camelot established working on the original Shining Force series brought forward into Golden Sun. The other best game that released that year, of course, was a banger from Treasure, and that is Gunstar Heroes. Gunstar is a run-and-gun game that is unlike anything I've ever played. It is one of the most frantic, one of the most beautiful, one of the most just foundationally sound games that just wouldn't be possible anywhere but on the Sega Genesis. This is why the Blast Processing exists. This game is incredible. An amazing soundtrack, phenomenal gameplay, and just one of the most frantic, fun, exciting gameplay experiences you will ever have. Nineteen ninety four brought us the first and only entry from the Castlevania series on the Sega Genesis with Castlevania Bloodlines. And this is such a unique entry in the Castlevania mythos because it's very different than anything else that was released. I personally prefer Super Castlevania 4, but Castlevania Bloodlines was and is a spectacular game. It's a little bit faster than other Castlevania titles, it's definitely designed specifically for the Sega Genesis, and the look and sound and gameplay are just really, really well done. It isn't my favorite Castlevania, but it's still a fantastic title that you can lose hours in because of how great it is. It's also really interesting that it takes place right around World War I, so it's a little bit more of a modern setting than other Castlevania games we've played. 
The other game I chose for 1994 was Super Street Fighter 2. Now, this one is almost necessary to pick just because of, I mean, really how important Street Fighter was to the home console market. And this version of Street Fighter is fantastic. It's not over the top and frantic like some of the hyper fighting games. It's just solid Street Fighter 2 gameplay. You have everyone from the original release. You have the bosses. You have the new challengers with Cammy, Fei Long, T Hawk, and DJ. It's really wonderful. This is still a great game, and it still looks, plays, and sounds fantastic to this day. We kind of start getting into the doldrums of the console in 1995. Now, there were still some great games released, don't get me wrong, but the releases started to lessen up. They started to get a little bit fewer and farther between, but there were still great games to be found. And up first for me is Earthworm Jim 2. Now, I will admit I'm not the biggest fan of Earthworm Jim. Sorry, Gary. But I do think there's something really admirable about the design. First off, it has some of the best music ever in a video game. This is like the one thing Tommy Tallarico's ever done well is music. He made something that sounded incredible and the game just was a really unique take on an action platformer that was also a shoot 'em up It didn't take itself seriously. It didn't try to be something it wasn't. It was just fun. And it played brilliantly well. Of course, we also got in 1995 the superlative comic zone. Now, as a lifelong comic book fan and comic strip fan, this was a game that immediately spoke to me. The gameplay is spectacular. It looks incredible. It has some of the most creative level design with branching paths that you're ever going to see in a video game. It's such a phenomenal beat em up that I am legitimately shocked that we've never gotten anything else in the Comic Zone franchise other than this initial game. Now, I know we're scheduled to get something new. There's been that rumor of new games coming from Sega, and Comic Zone is on that list. So I'm very hopeful that we're going to see a new entry there, actually see a proper sequel, because this is a franchise that just deserved more than it got. It was brilliant. Ninety-six was an interesting year because this is legitimately you can you can see things slowing down to kind of a snail's pace and a trickle of games to be released for the console. But there were still some really excellent titles released. Up first for me is gonna be Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And this one, I am not the hugest Mortal Kombat fan. Like to this day, it's just not something that I'm really super stoked for, but Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 is a really solid game. So it's an improved version of the original Mortal Kombat 3. You get a massive roster. The original characters that were in MK3 are in there as well. You also get Jade, Kitana, Reptile, and Scorpion. And then you can unlock Classic Sub-Zero, Ermac, and Melina as well. You can also unlock Smoke, which is pretty cool. It's a really solid version of Mortal Kombat. Now, again, I'm not the hugest Mortal Kombat fan, but if you're going to play an MK game, you might as well go with the best from the 16-bit generation, and that's Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. We also got the final game released on the Genesis in the Golden Axe series in Golden Axe 3. This is another fantastic kind of hack-and-slash beat-em-up game set in a medieval setting where you're going to go through, and sadly you can tell that these are not gopher men that you're kicking to get the magic. They're just, they're just gnomes. And I guess that's okay, you can kick a gnome. This is a great game though. It's it's really fun. It's a really solid beat em up. It doesn't really do anything terribly exciting or new compared to other versions of Golden Axe, but I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's still a fun game. I have an apology to make because I lied to you earlier. I said I wasn't gonna include any NHL games, but when you get to the end of a console life cycle, the pickings become slim. So we have here NHL 98. Now, this is by far my least favorite entry on the Sega Genesis of the NHL games. I don't think this is a great game. I think it's too fast. I don't think it controls terribly well. I think the gameplay is a little too bad to be considered a good game. It's just not fun. It's very loosey-goosey. I just, not my thing, not my game, not my favorite NHL experience. But you know what is good? Lost World Jurassic Park. Now, I have no idea what the purpose of this game is. I don't know what the point is. I don't have an instruction manual for it. I'm just playing it. But the gameplay is solid. You walk around, you find items, you kill dinosaurs, you fight poachers. 
it's just a really well-designed game. It controls really well. It's got a top-down view, and I'll be darned if it isn't fun to play. Is it anything special? No, not really, but it's not a bad title at all. It's just fun, and really, when you're getting this close to the end of a console's life cycle, that's kind of all you can ask for. Nineteen ninety-eight is real easy because we got one count them one game released for the Sega Genesis, and it's Frogger. It's Frogger. It's it's the version of Frogger you have played since nineteen eighty-one, released in nineteen ninety-eight on a Sega Genesis cartridge, and that's really all I have to say about it. It's Frogger. There you have it, my friends. In my opinion, what are the best games released? every year for the Sega Genesis. Now, like I said, this is just an opinion. It is not fact. You are free to disagree. In fact, I would love for you to let me know down in the comments which games I overlooked, which ones I picked that you don't agree with, and which ones you think just should never have made it onto this list. Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider clicking the thumbs up button. That like button really does help the channel out. The engagement is a wonderful thing. If you're new around here, I do a couple videos a week. I'd love to have you stick around. Click the subscribe button. If you really dig the work I do, links to Patreon or the channel membership are down below. Until next time, folks, I've been Jay. Appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. Remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.